Well, hello. This is a trip down memory lane for me. You probably think electric scooters and electric bikes are something new. Well, that isn't the case. Um, back in 2001 to 2002, sometime around that kind of era, there was a craze amongst all the kids to have electric scooters. Now, you know, there were certain brands, you know, they were usually labelled e-scooter. I'm not actually sure who manufactured these things. They were from China, obviously. And everybody had one of these. However, there was a few problems with them that the average user simply wouldn't be able to solve on their own. The headsets were quite fragile and the batteries were really cheap lead acids that would usually die within you know, short notice. And of course returning stuff like this was an absolute pain in the backside. And of course the police decided to spoil the fun back in those days. You couldn't just use one of these on the road without getting in trouble. Uh, today that's a bit different of course with uh, the government going green and everything else like that. Of course, if you get cars off the road, that's a good thing. These things really are not that fast. 12 to 15 miles an hour, depending on the model you had at the time. And, um, you know, today, they can be used without much problem. Or at least, you know, take that with a grain of salt, because it is still technically illegal. It's not been written as a law that you're allowed to use these, but everyone in London is using them. Or at least the smaller, the smaller variant. Although this is less powerful than some of those small ones. But we'll go into that in a minute. Okay, so... What have we got here then? Well, this is a brushed electric scooter, it uses a brushed motor. Now, the motor claims to be only 180 watts, although it certainly looks bigger than the 250 watt ones, which look the same as this, by the way. They've done a um, 180, a 250, a 200, a 500, and a 600, I believe, in this form factor. It just looked exactly the same. Well, the bigger motor ones typically had larger wheels um, for a higher top speed with the same RPM motor. So here, is the uh, motor itself. You see it's quite wide for a 180 watt. This really doesn't look like a 180 watt motor. Now, a bit of uh, cutting and shutting, you can get a thousand in here. Um, you'd have to cut this beam out of here by the looks of it. This isn't quite a direct fit. I'm sure you can get something bigger in here though, like 500 or something like that. No, not much problem. So, you know, that's pretty cool. It's uh, brushed of course. There's the speed controller down there. Um, now it's all potted in epoxy so it's all waterproof. The plastics on these however was really terrible back in the day, you know that was the main thing. This plastic, yeah it would break the second you went down a curb or done anything like that. Um, chain drive, there were chain drive variants and there were belt drive variants. Which is better, well if you like coasting down hills properly, the chain drive is certainly better because there is a freewheel. Whereas the belt drive there was not, or at least most belt drive ones didn't have a freewheel. There's your horn, skid plate underneath slash battery tray. Would have used two 12 amp hour lead acid batteries back in the day. I believe that headset is inch eight threaded, like a bicycle one. It has the so-called suspension they had back in the day with like an elastomer urethane damper in there. Just that's all there is, it's rubbish room basically. Solid tires on this one. Most had pneumatic tyres, although this has solid. It has indicators, although they're not working. The bulbs are totally gone, as they always did. As soon as you went down a kerb or off-road or anything like that, they would break. This plastic would also break. It had a key lock ignition. Again, that would also break quite often as well. And there's a key down there to get the batteries out. It has a thumb throttle on it because it did have a twist throttle. But the twist throttle was not working, so I put a thumb throttle on here. There's your little lights, halogen 12, uh, 12 or 20, no 24 volt light. This is a bit of a pain because it's not as common as the 12 volt ones. And this is sealed. I can't figure out a way of actually officially getting this apart without actually cutting into it or you know breaking that little spot weld or crimp there. I'm definitely about to get in here but I don't think you was ever intended to replace the bulb in these. But you know, it's easy enough to do with a bit of uh, bodgery. It's a folding unit, this undoes and then it will fold down. The seat comes off, it doesn't really fold up as such. Some did have folding seats, this one didn't. And yeah, it's a pretty cool device. As I said, about 15, 12 to 15 miles an hour, depending on the terrain. Although it could certainly do with some modifications for the hills to get some more oomph out of that motor. A lot of people will overvolt these, and you know, they'll put a 1000 watt controller on it and think it's going to get a 1000 watts. That's not the case. The motor's not going to pull a 1000 watts just because you've got a 1000 watt controller. The 1000 watt controller just simply means the controller can give out 1000 watts before it goes pop. 
the motor is not necessarily going to use all of that. Um, if you overvolt it, say you have a 36 volt, 1000 volt, 1000 watt controller, then um, you're still not going to get 1000 watts. You're going to get realistically one third minus any losses of the extra power that you would have had originally. So it would be one third extra minus the losses in the system. The losses are going to be emerge as heat, which can be a problem for the motor. They're brushed. You're going to get arcing around the commutator bars, and it's going to uh, potentially, it's going to eventually kill the motor. It's not an if, it's not a but. It's just simply when the motor blows up. That concludes this video of the e-scooter. Thank you for watching.